for most of the years I was doing the show, where's Kramer? Was the question I was asked on the street most often. To which I would, you know, always answer, honestly, I don't know. And, um, but now, uh, when I perform, whenever I ask, take questions from the audience, they, the one line they always want to hear me say is, hello, Newman. And uh, I'm always happy to do it. Uh, but I, whenever I do, I have to, in the back of my mind, just wonder what possible pain have we visited upon the life of Wayne Knight <laughs> and how often he must be greeted by those two words wherever he turns in life to any time he just opens a door. There must be someone waiting to say hello, Newman, to him. I was in um, Las Vegas on Easter Sunday uh, going to my aunt's funeral. Not a combination of events, not pleasant, not pleasant. Had no reservations for any place to eat. <clears throat> Every place is book solid. I'm there trying to get in with my wife and people going by, hello Newman, love you Newman, 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 hi Newman, hey Newman, oh Newman, until finally I grabbed someone and said, then give me your table if you love me so damn much. I would say m most people often just call me Elaine. And in fact, sometimes people that I'm working with uh, call me Elaine. The day after that my episode aired, the weirdest thing happened. Somebody recognized me in my car, which I could see, you know, you could see me a block away walking down the street. You would know, that's that guy, you know, and I still get a lot of, that's that guy. But to be in my car and driving along and somebody honks and, go, and I'm looking at him like, what's your problem, buddy? And he's like, great job on the show last night. It was almost immediate. I almost started getting recognized uh, as Putty, you know, after those first couple of episodes. Nobody recognizes me as having been on Seinfeld. Nobody ever saw my face. The 50-year-old, you know, drunken mechanic guy at the bar, he's got me in a headlock and we're best friends. Like, you mother. Those are, you know. I got a lot of fans like that, the, the big, crazy, drunk guys. They love putty. I was in a restaurant, minding my own business, having lunch, reading a newspaper. And I was really engrossed in what I was reading, and I'd finished my meal, and the waiter came, and he took the plate away. And I was waiting for my coffee and like this, and all of a sudden, I looked up, and he came towards me. He had a plate with a Snickers bar on it, and he put it in front of me. The whole restaurant was in on the joke. I mean, that's when I knew. You know, I mean, this was only on last night. I went to the post office and some guy tapped me on the shoulder and he goes, did you watch Seinfeld last night? And I said, yeah. And he goes, God, you look exactly like that soup guy they had on there. An actor didn't show up in an episode called The Beard, who was supposed to be standing next to Kramer in a police lineup. And the stage director just grabbed me and said, can you do this? <laughs> I actually had a guy approach me in a supermarket once and say, weren't you the guy who stood in the line in the police station next to Kramer? The one thing about the stall that, that haunts me to this day is that if somebody knows I'm going to the bathroom in a public toilet, I am often asked if I could spare a square. I think the interesting thing was how much it struck everyone, even after the show was a hit for years, the difference when syndication hits. After I did the show, um, it kind of like, you know, I've been retired almost, well, around a year. And um, um, it did give me a, a, a second life, so to speak. People that knew me from baseball, of course, you know, the Seinfeld show was a big smash and everybody loved it. But as the years have gone by now, it's the generation that didn't see me play. They don't relate to me as Keith Hernandez, baseball player. You know, they relate to me as Keith Hernandez in a Seinfeld show. Once it's in every market, everywhere around the country, around the world, several times a day, I think even the four of them felt a difference at that point. It just, it's just amazing what, what syndication did for that. I have kids come up to me this day. They're now, what, it's been well over 10 years now, so they're, some of them are in their 20s, and they'll come behind me and go, well, I, I'm not going to help you move. Or what was it like kissing Elaine? Which I always say was awful, eight, ta eight takes, brutal. That was the hardest part, but <laughs> anyway. Uh, it kind of 
uh, a younger generation knows who I am because of that show, absolutely. Seinfeld has given me a, a new life in the sense that a whole, you know, young high school age guys who weren't really aware of me uh, suddenly were saying hi on the street. Very cool. People started saying after three or four years, Uncle Leo, there's Uncle Leo. I never had that before. You know, it was, it was kind of marvelous to get this kind of recognition everywhere I went. I've been in, you know, a lot of movies and other things and directed and produced and stuff, but my little moments there on Seinfeld probably adding up to, I mean, if you added up every shred, it's probably 19 minutes, is by far the thing that if I'm ever recognized, that's what it's for. I was apartment hunting and um, I was trying to find a place to park and I just slipped into a red zone real quick and uh, this, you know, officer came up and I was coming back out of the building and he started to write and he looked at me and went, uh, uh, you, uh, 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 just get out of here. And that's all I got from him. So, you know, it definitely had its advantages. I get stopped probably, if, if I'm in, a, if I'm in a, a city anywhere outside of L.A., probably 100 times a day. My daughter was absolutely frightened and appalled. and She's a New Yorker. When she walked down the street with me for the first time, and people come up to me all the time and slap me on the back or say, Hi, Mrs. Slainville, waving from taxi cabs. And it's, it's wonderful. It really is, it's wonderful. I get stopped for being Banya, I would say 99% of the times I walk out my front door. People rarely ever recognize me. Th people say they recognize my voice before they recognize me. I think it's because when you, when you shoot things on television, you know, they, they put you in nice clothes and they do your hair and I'm really kind of a bum. I'm a slob, really. I had many people um, complaining to me about the death of Susan and my possible culpability, but that was dwarfed by the amount of people that were completely repulsed by the eating the eggplant out of the trash, and primarily because they said, but you really had to do that then. You like took it out of a garbage can. You know, you can just explain it up the wazoo. This garbage can, you know, anybody could have eaten a three course meal out of. This is a, well, this is a show business prop here. But uh, all I know is I ate an eggplant out of a garbage can, and I had more revulsion come my way from that than even, you know, the potential killing of my fiance. And I remember one time I was at a, a friend of mine's uh, a 40th birthday party, and uh, at the buffet line, this uh, other actor walks up to me, and he leans over to me, and he goes, ooh, that would be grounds for dismissal. And it was Tom Hanks. And, and, uh, and Tom said that he'd been a fan, he'd been getting the, uh, the, the Peterman catalog for, for years. And he, he said he used to sit there and read it to his wife in bed and just sit there going, you know, by item by item and item. And this was the nature of the catalog. He said, finally, now I have a voice that I can use. Always strange to me in places like Manhattan, which is so dense with people, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, uh, so the recognition, I mean, it's, it's an amazing uh, power that show has. I mean, in reruns, I mean, every day, every day, literally. And Jerry told me that would happen. He said, just you wait till you've done a few episodes, he said. And he said, you, he said, your life won't be the same. We did shoot either Rolling Stone or Entertainment Weekly or one of those. We had a huge photo shoot and we were, had been and did the cover. And then we thought, oh, this will be fun. Let's go, the four of us, out to dinner. And we'll sit on the sidewalk at, on like uh, uh, Central Park West Columbus at a cafe, we'll sit outside, everybody in New York will freak out because it'll be the four of us sitting there together talking. Not one person recognized us. It was the biggest <laughs> knock to the hubris ever. For the scenes from India, we had an elephant. I remember walking to the set one day past the elephant with Jerry, and Jerry just shakes his head for a second. I go, what's the matter? He goes, oh, God, I'm really losing my mind. I said, why? I said. He goes, I just had this moment where I was wondering if the elephant recognized me. I was like, oh, you really are gone, aren't you? I got off the plane in West Palm Beach. I was going down there to play golf, Florida. And the fellow comes over to me. He's got his wife, his daughter, and two grandchildren. He says, Marty, how are you? I look at him and I said, fine, fine, how are you? He says, good. He says, listen. That's a nice kid you got there. I said, uh, Jerry? He says, yeah, who else? I said, yeah, he brings in a few bucks a week. I, I like him, he's nice. 
And this guy thought I was his father. I mean, he really, you know, he, he, he identified me with, his, with Jerry's real father. Evidently, people thought I was the head of NBC or something, because I still get, and especially then, I still get people saying, oh, can we submit this script to you? Or, you know, like, can we have a meeting with you? And I'm like, well, you can, but it's not going to help. I, you know, I'm not really the head of NBC, you know, and Jerry isn't really that Jerry. You know, he's like a different Jerry. That they knew, I guess, in my case, they thought the smaller parts were, were real people. Well, everybody thinks we're married. Yes. For well, just because you were caught coming out of my room that time, I mean, that's ridiculous. I got locked out. <laughs> I get so many people that come up to me and say, you know, I was in New York, and I waited in your line, but, you know, or, or I went to your soup stand, but it was closed for the summer. And I always have to say, like, I'm an actor. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not him. Everyone, every color, every religion, every ethnic, every, oh, I love you. You're just like my mother. You're just like my uncle. You're just like my father. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. And people get so excited, you know, because they love the show and they see it over and over and over and over again. And people come up to you and they say, your lines? You know, I have no idea what my lines were. I barely knew what they were then. They're remembering lines I can't remember. And they want me to do the dance and push them and say, get out and stuff like that. And they know the other characters' lines. Staggering. I was sitting at um, Barney Greengrass on Amsterdam in 87th the other day. And uh, somebody behind me was talking about an episode. And they were saying, and this happened and that happened, and I just turned around and tapped on the show and said, actually, that was in a different episode. You've got it mixed up. And the guy just, he went white. He just couldn't, it was actually a young kid. He, he was like, you know, 17 or 18. It was such a funny moment. He was so excited, he couldn't believe it. It was like the Woody Allen, Marshall McLuhan moment for Manny Hall in real life. It was hilarious. When I went to Europe uh, with Anne, her play had opened in Hamburg, Germany, and I was in the airport there. And I said, well, here I am in Hamburg with Anne. And all of a sudden, these German stewardesses came up to me and says, excuse me, they say, are you on Seinfeld? I said, yes. Can you get me a date with Jerry? <laughs> I said, uh, no, I don't think so. They said, well, how about you? <laughs> I remember one time I was on a romantic trip to Venice, Italy. And I had never been to Venice, and we were doing the, uh, the gondola ride. And we get on the gondola, and the first thing you do before you get on is you negotiate the price of the gondola with the gondolier, I imagine is the word. And uh, he looked at me and he went, oh, Jerry's friend. I thought, <laughs> is that right? My gondolier is a fan. And uh, of course, I couldn't talk him down very low because he thinks I'm loaded because I was <laughs> Seinfeld. So I, I overpaid for the gondola. I remember I would take trips during the summer to just get away, get out of the States. And I remember I went to Bali and I went deep into the jungles. One of the oldest primitive Buddhist tribes is there. And they're naked running around there. And, I, and I, some of these, these people, they saw me in the jungle and they went, It's a guy! I saw you! And they went running, and I found out later they had a long cable stretched a thousand feet through the jungle to this hut where they had a television. And they would all get in there at night and watch this episode dubbed in some language. When I was hosting a National Geographic special over in, uh, was over in, uh, in Botswana, and um, the guide that uh, I had over there for the uh, uh, three weeks that I was there was uh, one of their better guides and was very, you know, very, very knowledgeable in the area. And I come over and I was introduced to him. He goes, oh, Mr. Peterman. <laughs> and apparently they had, uh, they were on a three week on, one week off. And when they finished in, uh, at, the, uh, at the camp that we were at, they flew back to Johannesburg and that's where they watched Seinfeld. I was at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, for God's sake. And I had, Uncle Leo, where's the watch? I remember I was running and there was a, a group of guys, young high school students, who spotted me. And they must have had it set up, but they started with pretty sloppy poppy. And uh, it's gone on like that forever. I love it. I love, you don't put yourself on television in front of the, the entire world if you don't want people to recognize you. It's silly. People are grateful 
for those uh, those nights weekly where they got to watch a show they all loved. That's amazing to be a part of that kind of experience. I'm grateful for that. Thank you. 